Hello sewing people of the internet. I've actually gotten a couple of requests to make a video about the fabrics that I use the most. So at least two of you should like this video. In this video I'm going to talk about the fabrics that I use the most, why I use them, and also uh, give you a little story about how one Craigslist purchase changed my life. If you like content like this, subscribe, like, comment, and share. And if you want to help support me continuing to do this, one way you can do that is by buying merchandise from my Teespring store. You can see a shelf below or a link in the description. And I have t-shirts, coffee mugs, stickers, that kind of thing. Now let's talk some fabric. I should probably add at this point, if you're new to my channel or just stumbled on this video, I mostly make uh, utility items like backpacks, messenger bags, duffel bags, those kinds of things. Uh, so if you're into making uh, flowy, delicate skirts, this material will probably be of no interest to you, uh, but you know, who knows, you might find some application for what I'm going to share. So quick backstory, uh, I've been sewing for probably 10 years and probably, you know, seven or eight years ago, I kind of started to think about making a backpack and I made a couple of uh, iterations of backpack-like things out of just typical fabric store fabrics. Uh, and as I was continuing to grow in my sewing skill, uh, you know, I was always perusing Craigslist for sewing machines and things, and I saw an ad for some pattern fabric weights, these things. I, I don't know what brand these are, obviously I bought them used, but I'll put a link below to uh, some that you can get on Amazon if you want to check those out. These things are really handy to have. So the ad was just for these things, and when I contacted the seller, uh, she mentioned that she had some other stuff that she needed to get rid of. And I think these were, they were asking like 75 bucks for a big box of these. I, I brought a hundred dollar bill with me thinking, well, maybe I'll get a couple of extra little things. Uh, the seller had had a small business making cases and bags for some specialty purpose and they closed their business. Uh, and long story short, uh, for whatever reason, they took a liking to me or just need to get rid of stuff. I don't know, but for a hundred dollar bill, I got these 150 yards of zipper and these three full rolls, basically, of, of fabric. Uh, it's probably a couple thousand dollars worth of fabric. As it happens, these fabrics are exactly the kinds of fabrics that I was wanting to explore using, so it was perfect. And what I've ended up with is a nearly inexhaustible supply of fabric that I can use to prototype things or try ideas on. Um, you know, I don't think twice about pulling a yard of this off, cutting it, and sewing something that I end up not using, which is kind of a double-edged sword. It's a great advantage for me to have this much fabric, but it's uh, also given me the bad habit of maybe not being as, as cautious about wasting fabric as I should. So uh, I don't necessarily recommend anybody go buy this much fabric unless you have a, a small business uh, and you know you're going to be making money with it, or if you've stumbled on something like I did, where you're basically being given it, then have at it. Um, I can't promise anything at this point, but there is a possibility that I may start selling off some of this fabric at a steeply discounted price from what you would pay retail for this stuff. So if you're interested in that, you know maybe drop a comment below and let me know so I can kind of gauge interest. Um, but there's no way I'll ever go through all this fabric. So let me tell you what these are and how I use them and how you might use fabrics like this. I forgot to deliver on the promise of the, the title of this video, how this changed my life, but basically by stumbling on this fabric, uh, this green fabric made my very first backpack uh, and you know, I already had a YouTube channel that was starting to grow and I don't know that that one backpack necessarily is what, you know, drove it further. but. You know, now I've made 10 or 15 different backpack-like things, and uh, I have several that are out in the wild now, and I'm moving towards trying to sell custom backpacks. I don't know that I would be where I am now in terms of sewing and the YouTube experience, all this stuff, if I hadn't had this large supply of essentially free fabric to experiment on, uh, you know, maybe having to spend a little bit of money to buy uh, fabric every time I needed a new backpack project might have slowed it down enough that I didn't pursue it anymore or got bored with it. So uh, definitely having this and giving me the opportunity to experiment as much as I have has been life-changing for me. So these are three pretty common 
uh, and typical utility bag type fabrics. There's a ton of newer, more technologically advanced fabrics on the market these days, especially for like the ultralight backpacking type backpack market. Um, I, ha I don't have any experience with that stuff, again, partly because I have all of this, so I don't really ever bother buying anything different other than maybe different colors, and we'll talk about that later. Um, but just know that this is not in any way all there is on the market. This is just what I use, but these are good options. So we'll go top to bottom. Uh, from the top, this is 400 denier pack cloth. Now this happens to be black, and I use this for a specific purpose. Hold on, I'll show you. I'm occasionally asked to make a cover for a machine that cleans vinyl records. I made one for a friend, he put it on his YouTube channel, and I've been asked to make a couple dozen or whatever over the years. Um, I'm not going into great detail about it because I hate making them and they don't really make me any money. It's just sort of a labor of love thing. Uh, I have a video way back in my channel if you want to look for it. So uh, I use this material to make it. Uh, so far, all but one person who's ever ordered one of these things has wanted it in black. So I happen to have a lot of black fabric. This is a great material. It's, it's overkill for a dust cover, uh, but it's a nice durable option and I have it. Probably the main thing I use 400 denier pack cloth for is as a liner for the interior of backpacks. But I don't use black for that. Uh, I did on this bag, and I'll talk about this bag in a little bit, but uh, this is why I don't use it, because you can't see inside a, a cavernous backpack when it's in black. So I tend to order 400D in blaze orange, occasionally like a light green or something. So having this large supply of 400D nylon pack cloth uh, benefits me from a an R&D, you know, experimentation standpoint and for making these audio equipment covers. Uh, I may occasionally make other things with it, but I don't actually use it for the thing that I use 400D for the most. But anyway, that's what that is. Uh, I've also seen it listed as 440 uh, denier and maybe 420 denier. I think they're all maybe the same, but they're close enough. Uh, I've used 200 denier on some packs. Uh, it's a little bit thinner. If you're really trying to, you know, maximize weight savings, that might be a good option too. It's probably plenty tough, uh, but I just always use 400D. Below that in the middle here is my massive roll of 1680 denier ballistic nylon. If you can kind of see that this is the face finish, so it's a little bit duller, it's shiny on the uh, inside because it's got a durable water repellent coating. 1680 denier pack cloth is commonly used for soft sided luggage, for uh, like high abrasion sections of like motorcycle wear. Uh, it's a very tough abrasion resistant fabric. Uh, one of the projects that I've used this for is this workout sandbag that I made a couple of years ago. Um, and I fill it with about 45 pounds of sand in individual bags inside uh, and use it for working out. It's held up incredibly well. Uh, recently though, recently I did a workout where I was dragging it down the sidewalk for some distance and started to get some, some holes worn in it. So. Maybe that wasn't a great idea, but it's still fine for now. I also use that fabric to make the uh, gun case I made a few years ago when I moved from Colorado to transport some guns that I inherited to my house. And now those guns are locked in a safe and this has just been taking up space. So I'm probably gonna take this apart and use it for something else. And you know, and again, that's another problem with having all this. I can spend the time to seam rip this apart and reuse it, or I can just cut off more because I am never going to run out of this, but I really don't like throwing something like this away. I'd rather just take it apart and use it for something else before it eventually makes its way to the trash. I'll put a card up to a video of the uh, messenger bag I made for my brother for his birthday a couple of years ago that used uh, this 1680 denier ballistic nylon and also uh, more 1680 but in a different color um, 
so again, sometimes I may want to use this material, but not gray, and so I can order it. And the advantage of having this is at least I can know like this is what it feels like, uh, you know, and how it performs and how my machine sews it and stuff. So I can just order whatever color I want, and I know how it works because I've used it so much. Uh, sorry to interrupt my own video, but I just wanted to interject something uh, for things like this 1680 denier ballistic nylon and also 1000 denier Cordura. I usually use either my Sailrite Ultrafeed walking foot machine or one of my industrial walking foot machines. I'm mostly using the industrials these days, but I know a lot of you are using domestic machines and you definitely can sew this material on a domestic machine. So that's just two layers sewn together and then uh, turned right side out and top stitch. So it's going through four layers uh, and just fine, no problem. If you are making something really complicated like a backpack and have some thick seams and transitions and stuff, a uh, domestic machine might struggle with the thickness of this material, but it can be done. So don't feel like you have to have an industrial machine to sew this stuff. It just works better. And this bottom roll is 1000 denier Cordura in a forest green that I think is probably has not been a particularly popular color, but I think it might be coming back, or at least I'm trying to make it come back because I want to make some stuff out of it. Uh, and well, if nobody buys it because of the color, that's not going to help me much. But 1000 denier Cordura is probably the most common utility and travel backpack like material uh, it's ubiquitous it's very tough water resistant it's great stuff i also have some in black and i've got some desert tan sitting around but this is the only roll i have i recently made this uh sandbag backpack for running occasionally i like to run while carrying weight because i'm not very smart uh, and I used the thousand denier for that and there's a couple of reasons why I did that one I wanted to make a roll top out of thousand denier and see how it performs all the roll tops I've made have been out of uh, waxed canvas and also I intentionally under engineered this bag so I didn't I didn't double stitch any of the main seams on the body uh, it's just sewn together pretty rapidly uh, and I'm going to beat the crap out of it and see if I see any failures. Um, you know, I, th there's an advantage to overbuilding things, but if it's, you know, not doing any good and you're just wasting time doing an extra row of stitches or whatever, uh, then that's not really beneficial. So, but anyway, I really like how this fabric works uh, in this configuration. So I'm definitely going to make some more packs with that material. Over the years, I've also bought, you know, a yard or two of different materials to use for projects. Uh, another option for backpacks, uh, besides this 1,000 denier Cordura, this is 500 denier Cordura. A little bit lighter, uh, probably just as tough, and, you know, in real world conditions, probably an excellent fabric. This pack is made out of some olive drab 500 denier and some black 500 denier Cordura that I had. And... Uh, just another good option to consider if you're looking to purchase some fabric. A lot of the online fabric retailers uh, may offer sample swatches that you can order too. So if you want to, if you're like me and you want to feel what the fabric feels like before you commit to making a project with it, that might be something to try. I ordered a sample pack of swatches of Cordura nylons from one of the online retailers that I frequent. And uh, I just put it into this binder so that way if I want to look for a particular color or pattern to see, you know, what I think about it, it's just here. I think it was like 20 bucks or something for that. But if you're going to be making a lot of stuff uh, and ordering fabric somewhat frequently, that might be a good option. 
the tutorial backpack that I made for the roll top backpack tutorial uh, a year and a half ago or whatever it was now uh, was made out of waxed canvas and I just ordered fabric for that project from Big Duck Canvas. I have an affiliate link with them in the description below if you're looking for waxed canvas in particular, but they have a lot of other fabrics too. Uh, you might want to check them out. Uh, full disclosure, if you order from that link, then I get a small commission at no extra charge to you. Uh, but anyway, on the subject of waxed canvas, I do use waxed canvas kind of often, I guess. I don't have a big supply of it, but uh, cautionary tale. One thing I like about Big Duck Canvas is they have a pretty extensive selection of waxed canvas. Uh, and you can get reasonable amounts of it. One of my first big backpack projects that I made was for a, a dear friend of mine, and in order to finish the pack, I needed an extra yard of uh, gray waxed canvas. And at that time, it was very difficult to find waxed canvas, and the only place I could find the right color was from a retailer that had a five yard minimum and would only ship it on a roll. So, in order to get this yard of fabric, I ended up spending something like $150. So I, had, I bought five yards of fabric, but I only needed the one yard. So now I have, you know, quite a bit of waxed canvas, which is great, I'll use it, but, uh, you know, I'd rather have not had to spend that money to finish the project that I wasn't getting paid for. If you're not familiar with wax canvas, it's cotton canvas that's been impregnated with a wax to provide a water repellent surface and one nice thing about waxed canvas is that it develops a patina over time as you use it and you know touch it and scratch it and stuff kind of like leather does so it's a pretty cool fabric to work with and this isn't really a fabric but uh, i often use bicycle or motorcycle inner tube on the bottom of backpacks and bags it provides a very durable and water repellent bottom of a bag so I don't have to worry about putting it on the floor and not noticing that there's some water or something on the floor. So I like doing that. I've been asked a couple times to do a video on how to work with this stuff and I am working on that so stay tuned. A project like a backpack or a messenger bag or a duffel bag is not only made of fabric. Another component is often zipper. I almost always use number 8 YKK continuous coil zipper. And you guess why I almost always use that? That's right, because I have 100 yards of it. Uh, this came with that big purchase of all this fabric and stuff. But again, I got really lucky because this is exactly the kind of zipper you want to use on utility bags or, you know, commuter bags, urban carry stuff. So, it's perfect. This zipper is easy to work with. It opens and closes easily. It's big enough to handle well, but not too gigantic. This would be overkill for a bag. You can also get continuous coil zipper in an AquaGuard finish, uh, a water resistant, not waterproof, water resistant zipper, and I do use that fairly often. For comparison's sake, this is number 10, and this is number 8, and those numbers equate to the distance in millimeters across the teeth. So this is 10 millimeters across, and this is 8 millimeters across. For most of my webbing, I use Milspec 17337 nylon webbing. I use that webbing as grab handles, as the structure strap on shoulder straps, for accessory straps, as compression straps. I, I use it for a lot. Milspec 17337 webbing is also the webbing that's typically used for PALS webbing in a Molly system. On the occasion that I use binding, I've found that this one inch Milspec 4088 webbing or binding works as well as anything else I've used. Uh, main thing about binding is you need to make sure your binding attachment is the correct width for the binding that you're using. So, you know, seven eighths inch binding will go into a one inch binder, but it won't work well. It'll it'll go off track and stuff. So make sure that they match. But if I do have to do any binding, this is usually what I go for. One other fabric I guess I should mention is this spacer mesh. I use this uh, occasionally on the backs of backpack straps uh, and back panels for backpacks. I'm of the opinion that nothing you do to the back panel of a backpack 
is going to make your back not sweaty, especially here in Florida. It just doesn't matter. But this could have some benefit to be a little bit more comfortable. Uh, I do like how it works on the back of backpack straps. Uh, I often don't use it because I don't have any. Uh, I happen to have some right now, but when I'm out of it, I, I tend to not think about ordering more. But that's an option. All right, so that is just a quick rundown of the fabrics that I tend to use. Uh, there's loads and loads of other fabric options out there depending on what your project is and what you want it to be like. But these are excellent options for the kinds of things that I tend to make. If you have questions or comments, post them in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe.